way hey up she rises way hey up she rises dude have you seen uh hi hi by the way how's it going uh this is the stephen lee podcast i'm mr stephen lee it's absolutely bloody amazing to be hearing you or seeing you what do you do in a podcast can i say that can i say it's great to see you because i'm not seeing you i suppose you know you're more listening likely depends where you're listening or watching i suppose if you're on youtube then you're just seeing a big you know thing on my face that says stephen lee podcast with mr stephen lee on my shoulder and then just a random waveform in the bottom i was actually looking I was trying to see if I could do, like, a live waveform. And I think that would be sick as fuck, right? Because I cannot royally be arsed, um, actually, like, taking the audio file, uploading it into um, Adobe After Effects, and then making a waveform. Because that is just so much extra work for, like, what, really? Especially if I'm, like, you know, pinging... Um, Onto the internet and stuff, it's like, and like most likely than not, you're listening to this in audio form, or like even if you're watching on YouTube, you're most likely not looking at the screen the entire time. So I think that it's not worth. Um, but if I can somehow find like a live visualization, um, waveform, that would be so much better. I think that would just be cool. Um, but if not, it doesn't matter. Like it's not essential, so it is what it is. But yes, thank you so much for the reception we've received in these past four episodes of the Stephen Lee podcast. Of course, we had True, the one and only, the man himself. Um, as the most recent guest, and he was just absolutely stellar. I think he was the best first guest to have because I'm very comfortable talking to True, and um, I mean, I'm not, I don't think I'm nervous about the podcast, but I know that there's some uh, people that I certainly look up to um, and I'm inspired by that want to come on to the podcast, and I, a few that I've asked as well, or I'm meaning to ask as well, uh, some some of the homies that I've like known for ages and speak to on Twitch or whatever. Um, so... Yeah, it's, um, I don't know if I would have been quite nervous, you know, <laughs> but with True, I'm fine, you know, because we're, we're, we've been boys for ages, so it was, it was perfect, um, but yes, uh, I'm going to certainly have some guests on, right, I feel like I've just been a disorganized mess, um, since Monday, um, I recorded it and then released it and stuff, um, but I feel like uh, we're doing okay. We're doing alright. I've, be, I've been up uh, to just trying to deal with a whole bunch of fucking. I don't really know actually. There hasn't really been that much going on. It's just like um, I don't know, just kind of like streaming again. And uh, with uh, the, there was like this mad Argos guy that was supposed to come and collect a parcel for my uncle Alistair. Um, it was an absolute hassle, and the guy never came. Fucking never came, man. What the fuck, fucking Argos, dude. I, I don't, I don't know what's going on with that. Um. What else has happened? Um, I'm not really too sure. I've just been kind of hanging out with the boys, to be honest with you, uh, playing some Valorant here and there. And um, I also uh, downloaded a game called Monster Hunter World. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that. But I saw quite a few people talking about it and uh, playing it and stuff. Um, like in Discord, you can see whenever someone's playing a game. And I was like, why is everyone playing this? So <laughs> I was like, fuck it. I'll, uh, I'll have a wee gander. And um, by the powers of the internet, I managed to find a, a decent... Oh, Jesus. Sorry for that microphone. Uh, see, my my microphone is going downhill, but it's still pushing hard for now, you know. At least it launched the podcast. That's always a good thing to see. Um, yeah, like, I, I, got, I got a good copy of it, so um, absolutely wonderful. I will say one thing as well, though. Um, Kai, my friend, um, who I never stayed with. I, I've, I've kind of... He, we've had the same flatmates, but we've never stayed together. Um, he's a, a proper lad from Argyle. Um, he stays in uh, Glasgow now with my best friend, Ewan. Um, well, I mean, my childhood best friend. He's an absolute dick now, right? Of course. Um, that's, that's shocking. He actually came in um, during one of the podcast premieres. That's what we're doing um, on YouTube, by the way. We're um, just like, it, I don't expect anyone to arrive there, but if you want to see the podcast when it just comes out, then you can. Um, and it will be on like YouTube and it's just a premiere. So it's like a, a live stream of a past recorded video or podcast. It's pretty smart. Um, I like how it is. Um, and yeah, like you can just jump in there and talk shit whilst it's happening, um, which is cool. It's just cool. So he, he did that, and then he was like, "Oh, it's my former best friend, Stephen Lee Gidding. So <laughs> we dick man. No, but it's so cool getting to see the homies them come in and support. And uh, the the reception on Instagram has been huge as well. Thank you guys all for coming. And off the top of my head, it's like James, Spanky, Matthew, um, Adam. Liz, uh, George, my guy, Skypug, um, I think, the, the, well, Ruby, um, Chris, uh, there could be quite a few people that have uh, been piping up to say that they're listening to it and they're enjoying it, so thank you so much for that, that, that means a lot, um, 
uh, like I have no plan for this. It is literally just. <laughs> I think most things in my life that have been semi-successful have been things I have had like no plan for in the end. Like even when I walked across fucking countries and shit, like you think, oh, you're gonna sit back and you're gonna be a cartographer and you're gonna get your map out and you're gonna properly align everything. Did a fuck, man. I mean, in the beginning, yes, I did. Right. So I was like, very, I was like, I'll walk from here to here in this space time. You know, I was like really breaking it down. But then I realized I was just procrastinating. Um, because once you started, um, all that mattered was your end point. And that was it. What was in between didn't matter at all. And I think that's the best way to travel, to be honest with you. Um, I, d I miss traveling so much, uh, to be fair. Um, I don't know. See, like, see, being down here um, in Campbelltown, like, there isn't much... Like, there is hills, but it's such a slither of land um, that you don't really have all that much to go to. Um, like, I'm kind of I'm kind of missing, like, the Attica Alps and all that shit. Um, that you can just you can just fuck off and like go way up in the mountains and the like by the rest and be thankful and all that. Um, I don't know, I don't know. Like, I think uh, as as the weather gets better and stuff, and I'll, I'll have my van. Um, that will change everything. I think. Yeah, it will. Um, I just don't have an actual means of transport right now, except for my two little footies. Um, of course you can't walk far on your two little foots, but you can't. Um, obviously just do that every day. Uh, but it's nice getting to walk down by the sea all the time. Um. However, I want to go right the way down to the South End, which is, uh, you actually can look over to Northern Ireland. Um, it's fucking amazing. It's beautiful over there. You get to see, like, seals as well. And, like, the island that, uh, they make fucking, well, like, you know that, you know the, the, the ice thingy? What do you call it? Uh, bowls. Yeah, the bowls thing, like, the slidey bowl things. I think it's that, right? <laughs> I forget what it's called. Um, anyway, they make all of the, uh, the stone, well, they get the stone from there, um, in order to, uh, yeah, like, I, I don't know, like, I don't know where they take it, because I thought about that. I, I, Ayla Craig, Ayla Craig, hold on, I'll type it in. Uh, Ayla, I think, Ayla, Ayla Craig, yeah. Ayla Craig stones. Um, yeah, look, store for sale immediately. Um, oh, it's, it's AI. Okay, there we go. Um, now, yeah, curling stones. I'm a fucking idiot. Yes, curling stones. So there we go. Ayla Craig's an island of 99 hectares. Oh, Christ, they couldn't make 100. And the other, and the outer Firth of the Clyde, the Firth of Clyde, um, 16 kilometers west of mainland Scotland. Yeah, you can certainly, you can see it, easy. Um, upon which blue... Hone, a micro granite. Nice. Blue hone micro granite has long been quarried to make curling stones. There you go. That is what it is then. Population zero. Oft. Wow, man. That, that's a lonely place right there. Um, speaking of loneliness, um, I've actually been okay. Uh, see, having the cats here, man, it's completely and utterly changed, like, um, the way I wake up. Like, see, um, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm still going to bed, like, at ridiculous hour, but I just, I don't feel tired. I've gotten that state again where I'm just, I feel productive as well when I'm up at late at night or I just want to like kind of focus and be with me. Um, it's nice. Um, but then before I know it, it's like six, seven in the morning. I'm like, fuck, okay. Uh, so obviously jump back and go, go to bed. But see, when I wake up and um, like this morning was beautiful, I literally woke up with um, Brody, my big cat. He was like um, by my right hand side, but like just, he was like kind of on my chest. So he was like cuddling right into me and Mackie was underneath the covers um, by my right foot. Um, so I was like super warm, right? And it was so cozy. And then I just like, like obviously like started patting Brody and the windows as well. They were like slightly ajar. Like, you know how you can like lock them, but they're slightly open. It was like that. So the entirety of the room was just like filled with fresh air, but I was super cozy. It was so nice, dude. I was like, oh my God. Uh, I absolutely adore to have something like that with like a I know like a dog way up in a mountain you know like inside your sleeping bag I think that would be so lovely too um, I've always actually wanted to do that like see whenever you see people that have like um, hiking dogs I know a few of my mates have that too that would be unreal dude I um, obviously can't take a cat. Well, you could, but fuck, my, my Brody would just be fucking raging at me at all times, mate. I'm shitting in his backpack and stuff. Um, <laughs> but yeah, for sure. I, I'd love to get that eventually, but I always feel like having a dog, I can barely look after myself. Never mind a fucking dog, mate. Right! I also, right here, you know how I was talking about how I was getting raging about my cups of tea that were getting cold when I was doing, like, podcasts or streams or whatever, right? Well, what I've done to combat that is I have a full fucking teapot, all right? And I've also got a little... Oh, I should really be showing... Instead of Isaac, I'm showing this. Um, there we go. What I've also got is, like, a little cup of milk, right? I am the poshest motherfucker. Uh, th th this side of the Clyde? <laughs> Does that work? Uh, I don't, this side of the mountain. Um, uh, and the toon. So yeah, I've got like a full-on teapot just waiting for me here. I don't know if you can... Oh, listen to that. Oh, it's some... 
proper ASMR right there. Oh, listen to that, dude. It's actually splooshing everywhere. I've got like a wee heater on beside me. It's like a wee halogen heater. Um, I actually always feel like an old man when I use it. I love it. Uh, it's great though. It's like one of those um, that I was used to using the one that only had one bar available. Oh shit, spilt my tea. Fuck sake. What? I just, I can't do anything right. Gods. Um, I, I do prepare for spelling shit though. I always, I know, I have, I have learned that um, I spell things on the regular. So what I do <laughs> is I have some like kitchen roll just available um, so that I can, you know, clean up the spellage. Uh, don't look, don't look too far into that. Just have, having some toilet roll beside me at all times. Uh, it is, it is what it is. Sometimes you dribble, you know, sometimes you dribble. Just, it just is what it is, you know. Speaking of dribbling, uh, my, uh, my cat Brody is a fucking slobber machine. That, that cat is fucking disgusting, but he's so cute. Um, there's something about that. Like, how does that work? How do, how do animals, how can animals be so fucking cute, right? But they're absolutely atrociously disgusting. They're just, they're, they're, they're woeful. Like, it's terrible. Um, uh, maybe not woeful, but like, uh, like, whenever you pat Brody, right? And he dribbles on you. Like, not only does that acid, like, burn through your hand, um, you'll be smelling it for the rest of the week. Like, I swear down, it's, it's unreal how that happens, right? I need to drink some of this tea, it's too fucking... Oh, it's too full. Um, it's actually perfect, though. Oh. Oh, that's a good cup of tea. Right. I actually want you guys to write in or put in the comments or whatever. I'd actually adore... Oh, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll finish what I'm going to say before I go on a tangent right here, right? Fucking settle down, Steph. What's your favourite type of tea? Like, um, it doesn't have to be black tea. It can be anything of any form. Because I've been seeing uh, my guy Phoenix. Um, I will be getting him on the podcast at some point. Um, he's a, he's a, a Valorant streamer. Not necessarily just Valorant. He's a, he's a streamer um, as well as a, a major creative. He's a super interesting guy. I met him at uh, Twitch London. Um, and we'll get we'll get to learn a lot more about him whenever he comes on podcast. Of course, um, I think our most our soon um, our our next guest a hundred percent will be Yanverse. Um, I'm going to get him on after his big night um, on Friday. Uh, he's going to be uh, DJing on a like a proper record labels uh, Twitch channel um, with a whole bunch of other DJs, and I think that'll be really interesting to talk to him about that, and also just to understand how he's dealing with uh, being in the scene right now with. Uh, you know, uh, DJs are being one of the one of the first people to lose their job and one of the last people to regain it. So, yeah, it's a, it's a difficult time for them. Um, but yes, uh, <laughs> I'm such a tangent master. Anyway, cups of tea. What's your favorite cups of tea? Phoenix likes lavender tea. I keep seeing him posting about that on Twitter, um, and I'm like, fuck, lavender tea actually sounds glorious. I might actually have a bit of that myself. I don't think I've had that. I've had, like, lavender essential oil smells, and like, on my pillow, and, you know, I don't know. Like, what else do you use that for? Like, for spots or something? I don't really know. Um, your hair, maybe? Probably. Something like that. I don't know, just, just for a scent? Like, and, like, put it in the bowl? And, like, I don't know. But anyway, um, for me, I would say, like, my favourite teas of all time is just black tea with milk and um, uh, chamomile with honey. Um, I think that would be it. And then Steden Mint, which is like a, a mad uh, the Netherlands Dutch tea, uh, which is lovely. Very good stuff. Um, I actually got that, first of all, in Eindhoven. And uh, I finished the guy's packet because I was... It was actually kind of weird, that story. I rocked up at this guy's house um, into Eindhoven. Uh, PSV had just won. Like, their football team had just won. So the entire um, city was just, like, uh, buzzing. You could tell everyone was happy, like, uh, out drinking and stuff. Everyone's just having a good crack. Um, it was a really good aura in the city. It felt nice. Um... And I rocked into this guy's house, and he had a three-story house. Man, was fucking loaded, right? And he was going away for the weekend, and I was arriving on the Friday. So what happened is I rocked up on the Friday. We got to know each other over a couple beers. Um, uh, he, was, he was a lovely guy. I forget his name. See, this is the thing, man. See, whenever you... Like, I, I realize this. I have all these memories, but very little of the names. I think I've got most of the faces, which is weird for me, because usually I forget faces too. But, like, I think it's whenever you're in that, I don't know, you're a very vulnerable state, you do remember faces. And when I say vulnerable, I mean you're traveling in a foreign country. You don't have anyone that you know around you. It's just you to deal with it. So you're kind of a lot more turned on. Um, but, yeah, or turned on and tuned in, man. Uh, yeah, but it was interesting to... Um, just get to know him, uh, and then all of a sudden he was gone, and I was just left in his house. <laughs> I was like, okay. And he said, take whatever you want, you know, you want any coffee, here's where all the food is. Um, your room's up in the attic. It was a gorgeous attic. Um, it, it was unreal, man. I actually really did enjoy staying in it. Um, that was actually where I figured out what Twitch was. One of my friends was um, 
just streaming a guy called Ethan uh, Beneath uh, is what his name is on Twitch. Uh, he's an Australian guy. I've known him for, like at that point, I probably had known him for about six years, uh, but now it's about ten. Um, we'd uh, basically made videos together, knife-only videos on Call of Duty a long time ago, um, which was, it was interesting how that brings you together because you're like part of a crew of like how you play the game it just completely changes your mentality you're a lot more patient and i don't know i think you just gravitate toward other people that are like that so it was cool man it was weird like looking back like it's interesting how we came together because it was our friend bullseye blade who um had this like competition going on and i sent in a it was like basically just for like best gameplay stuff and i sent in a 19 to 1 gameplay which is 19 kills and one death on modern warfare 3 i think it was um knife only so you're only using your knife which is pretty good obviously i got mvp in that game and he liked that so he posted that and uh ethan also got one of his own ones um posted up and i saw that one too and i was like fuck this guy's really good so i started following him subscribed him whatever um and then before we knew it we were you know playing together we'd add each other on xbox and it was good crack um and then on uh that attic in that attic in eindhoven i was just uh, browsing through twitter and i saw him tweet like i'd followed him ages ago and he tweeted saying like live on uh, i don't think it was justin tv i think it was twitch tv at that point i'm not sure um it was most likely twitch tv um i think justin tv was what it used to be called but a good long time ago um and yeah like he was just going live so i clicked and i was like yo what's going on oh my god he has a webcam on this is the first time i'd ever seen him now this is something i've actually learned there is a lot of people online that you can build a proper relationship with but never know what they look like which is weird like that's such a different way of humans communicating man um but yeah that that was like, i saw what he looked like it was like oh that's fucking amazing then it's like it immediately builds an extra layer to the relationship um and then i started talking shit i explained who i was um he's like fucking ice mate stiffen What's going on, Stephen? All right, mate? You know, it was fucking great. Um, you know, a shrimp in the barbie. Dude, like, see when Americans fucking say that, dude. I love ripping the piss out of it, though. It's actually great. I actually love Americans because they make really easy content to rip the piss out of them, but other countries as well. Um, are you from England? You know, or <laughs> is Scotland in England? You know, like, all that shit. Um, anyway, uh, aye, so what was the point of bringing him up? Fuck, I can't remember. But, oh, was it just the attic at Eindhoven? I think that's why. But why was he even fucking talking about that? Oh, Stediment Tea. That's right, Stediment Tea. So, um, this guy had Stediment Tea in his cupboard, and I tasted one of them, and I was like, oh my god, this is unreal. And he only had, like, three more packets, and I was like, dude, I'm totally going to finish them at, at some point. So, I was like, okay, looking on the packet, where are they from? You know, I was looking around for a supermarket label or something, you get, like, Tesco's own or co-op or whatever. Um, and it said AH. I said, what the fuck's AH? So, I typed in AH Netherlands. Albert Hein. No, it was a J. Mate, it's A-H or A-J. I can't remember now. Uh, but it's one or the other, right? And there's a supermarket there, a fucking brilliant one. And I was like, all righty. I'm going to head down to the nearest, the closest, Albert Hein, Mr. Stephen Lee, sponsored by Albert Hein. Uh, and so, yeah, I rocked on down and got myself some fucking stenament. And then um, I had, like, a wee stove with me and stuff, and then I would just, like, drink that whenever I was walking. It was amazing. Um, and then I um, came back home... And I started streaming like a, a like a kind of soon after that and stuff. And then eventually I started to meet more Dutch people. And this guy called Hyper um, worked in Albert Hein. He was an absolute lad. Uh, I actually spoke to him recently uh, through another streamer. It was quite cool. Um, they were playing Animal Crossing. Dude, Animal Crossing looks unreal. It's so cute. But like people put so much effort into that, dude. I could not. I, <laughs> I'm trying to think of the game that I put the most effort into. I really don't know. I mean, Skyrim technically, I suppose, but like, I get bored building things um, on games. I don't know what that is. Uh, like, I like the competitive challenge of um, usurping people. Like, see, uh, you get an absolute pumped on Valorant, Valorant or whatever, or CS:GO, and you pull it back. Um, there's something so amazing about that. Or if you just completely sweep a team, or if you have a really good competition back and forth. I love that. That 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 feeling of just like being. Um, ready and capable and worth fighting for the win. I love that. That's so good. Um, I get bored on Minecraft. I get bored on Stardew Valley unless I'm just fishing. I could fish for a forever. Like literally, I on Stardew Valley, um, which is a game about it's like I don't know, there's like farming and that you build a wee house and stuff. You're a wee dude that runs around in a town and you get to meet people and it's really cute. It's nice, right? And it's like a top down um kind of pixelated game is super cute um however 
I literally downloaded the cheat codes so that I could pause time and then I would go down to the pier and then just fish. That was that's all I do on Stardew Valley. And it's super relaxing and um cute. They like uh it's it's very cozy um whenever you do that um on stream. Like, I can literally just sit there and fish and then talk to people um for the rest of the night. It's it's absolutely wonderful. I adore it. Um Aye, so what the fuck was the point? Oh yeah, I was talking about the fact that I don't like building things. I, I just get bored of it. Like, it's not that I hate, you know, like, seeing what other people have made and whatever. Um, I think that's remarkable. Some people put a lot of effort into it. I just don't have that part of me that wants to do that. Like, I have patience in me. It's not that I don't have patience. It's just that I don't think that way whenever I look at games. I don't know. I think, like, The Witcher as well, like, I suppose, like, you're always building your character, but on The Witcher, you did get an opportunity to, like, build your own, like, kind of, like, house and a vineyard and stuff, and it was quite cool, but I was just like, dude, I cannot be arsed with this, I'll, just, I'll give you money and you do it, you know, like, <laughs> because it asks you, like, uh, like, how, this is how much it will cost, like, do, do you want to spend it, like, fuck yeah, I didn't care what it was, it was like, fuck it, then you do it, you know, so I can just go out and slay some more monsters, um, but yeah, it's uh, it's interesting how that works. I, I don't, I don't really know. Um, but yeah, speaking of streaming, I am going to be repainting my entire booth on stream tonight. I'm actually very look, much looking forward to it. Um, I'm gonna take down the curtain, um, and repaint everything in a nice like kind of base grey color. It's like a silver. Um, I haven't, I haven't actually put it on the wall yet to test it, see what it looks like. Um, but I, what I did do is I bought a whole bunch of little, um, like little uh, tubs of paint. So it's like red and green and blue and yellow and white, uh, like a whole bunch of other like just kind of shades of that, um, different colors, so that I can um, just draw cool things uh, in the background and stuff. Um, instead of just having to have this uh, curtain up and stuff anymore, um, because the blue is, it's not nice on camera. It's really jarring. Um, it's just, it's quite piercing. It's like, it's a, it's kind of like a baby blue as well. I mean, th this room was never meant to be lived in, obviously. This is like a coal shed that I've converted into a booth. Um, so, aye, it, like, a, it is what it is. But with the silver and then with um, a little bit of life with me painting it, I think it will be quite nice in here. I don't know, though, like, I'm, I do like the coziness of the curtain, but it's not very... I don't know. I think what would be better is, like, if I did something, like, um, I don't know, like, got some got some lights and hanged it from the top somehow. Um, I think that would be a lot a lot cozier. Um, because it's not nice. Like, the, the way the, the curtains are. And, like, I've literally got a towel that says, uh, Toros en la Costa del Sol, España. Uh, and it's got, like, uh, a lady dancing. Uh, going there, Arriba! And then some some guy like the what do they call them the ma the matador um, who like fights the uh, the bulls with the red thing you know, which is a fucking terrible thing in Pompolina right that's how they do it that's terrible you fucking like buzz up a bull to then make him like try and kill you and then you you stab it with a spear like what the fuck's going on with that man. That's terrible, mate. All, all that kind of shit. I understand sacrifice. Like, I was watching Vikings recently. I understand sacrifice of goats and shit to your gods and all that. But doing that for pure fun, for that bull, you evil bastard, you. Let me tell you. I'm going to sip my tea, right? Because uh, that, that was a tea statement right there, wasn't it? Hmm. Hmm. I just realized I actually do do that. Um... I suppose that's why there's, like, an emote whenever people say, like, sp give me the T, spell the T, you know? Um, but for for real, like, uh, like whenever I'm on, Jesus, y microphone, dude. Um, this is bloody microphone, am I right? Hmm. <laughs> there we go, you, you see what I did there, guys? I'm fucking hilarious, I know. Dude, honestly, my improvisation skills. Uh, no, but I'm really excited to um, paint this up and uh, draw some emotes and some uh, subscribers' names and stuff in the back. Um, I think that'll be quite funny. It's like, oh my god, you subbed? I'll draw your name on the wall! <laughs> so, yeah, it'll be cool. Um, but yeah, I totally actually cleaned out my booth um, uh, yesterday morning. I couldn't sleep. Uh, I don't know why, I just couldn't. I just couldn't sleep, so, and it was about, say, half six or something, I was like, fuck it, I'll just get up and I'll do something productive until I'm sleepy. Um, so I ended up getting up and then I took everything out, um, and then I cleaned out the back lobby a little bit as well. I wanted to get some Himalayan salt lamps um, to have in the background, and it turns out, mate, is that these, oh, dude, I should have checked it. It happens all the time, I know this happens, right? It's what happened to my one, it's why I wanted the other one that was in the living room. These Himalayan salt lamps, the bulbs always break. 
they always bust. I don't know if it's just pure quality or it's like the, I don't know, the atmosphere of the salt or something affects the bulbs. I do not know, but they always break, right? My mum has bought multiple bulbs from Amazon um, to replace them, right? But it, it's really nice because whenever they light up inside, it gives that nice orange glow. It's beautiful. Um, but yeah, like uh, I went and set up the whole um, uh, extension cable. Pardon me, I'm from the living room uh, coming through. And, yeah, then I plugged it in and it didn't work. <laughs> Fucking idiot, dude. Um, I could have just checked that in the beginning and not had to go through all the hassle, but it was what it was. Like, I fed it all through as well. Like, I fed it through, made sure it was behind everything, um, that it wasn't just, like, a, a, a cable trailing. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've got power that goes to the back of the lobby right now, but there's nothing for it. I don't really know what I could put there. I could potentially put just a light, like a little lamp, but I don't think that would be as nice. Um... I was thinking, like, how do you emulate? Um, is there a way that I could just, like, I don't know, get, like, a different type of bulb system or something? Or, like, a torch? I don't know. I don't know. I think that's maybe a bit too much hassle. However, I do have, like, an iPhone 5 um, that's just sitting here doing nothing. I could, like, you know, just rig that up to have the torch on, but it'd probably blow up and it would go on fire or some shit. That's probably not a smart idea, to be fair. Um, yeah, I suppose. Dude, I keep getting paranoid that there's fire happening in this house, and I don't know why. I think it's just because my dad um, recently installed fire... Uh, uh, alarms in the house. Well, actually, only one at, at the bottom of the stairs, right? And I didn't know it was fucking there, right? I didn't know. So I was cooking some bacon, just uh, yeah, you know, just fucking, you know, like uh, deep fry, well, short frying it, you know, the fucking shallow fry, as you call it, right? And it was like, Push, fucking smoke everywhere, man. Like, fuck yes, man, get some eggs in there. And then all of a sudden, I start hearing it. Whoop, 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 whoop. I'm like, oh, Jesus. What the fuck? What's, what, what, what? I didn't, I didn't know. I was running around the house like, what the fuck is going on? What is beeping? I like, I knew it was a fire alarm, but I was like, why, what, what's happening here? How do I fix this? What the fuck? And then like, I was running, running around like in the living room and shit. Like, where is it? Where is it? And I realized, oh God, it's actually coming from like further out. So I looked out and then immediately I heard it. Like, you, you're just like dialing. It's underneath the fucking stairs so yeah i had to like jump up and like uh, you know like uh fucking waft some air in there and it was fine uh but yeah like i didn't know it was there I, so i think that's what like made me shake my pants the most um the only time you've ever i've never seen like a, had a proper fire alarm and it's been because of a fire it's always been um because of uh you know like um like, uh, uh, what do you call them? Tests. Dude, I can't even speak today. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, like tests in school and stuff. Whenever the whole school would have to pile on out because some can't punt their toast. Or, like, someone just pushed the uh, fire alarm for the bants because they were obviously so edgy. Remember those kids, man? The, those kids that you would know, like, you know, like, we'd all be outside and be like, it was fucking you, wasn't it, Ewan? You'd have that. It was just, like, people wouldn't know exactly who the wee arseholes were that were just, like, pure scene edgy kids. Um... But yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think. Like our our kitchen did go on fire once, though, in our old house. Um, that was a long time ago, though. This is like my little brother was going through for a shite, um, and he just saw like this like light flicker inside the kitchen because uh, the lights were off. And he was like, "What the fuck's that?" And he looked over, and the whole washing machine, no, the, the dishwasher, sorry, beside the sink had just licked into flames. Man, it burst like one of the buttons or some shit, short circuited. I'm not sure. Um, and then so he, he just starts shouting, "Fire!" You know, like, my, my dad runs through, like, oh, Jesus. So he's, like, you know, turning off all the circuit breakers and shit and then, like, getting the... Or, or like, I suppose he gets the fireworks down your force. I don't know, man. I, I was I was younger. Um, I was actually... I was outside. I remember. I was outside and I was walking down the hill um, and I could see my kitchen on fire um, from outside, which was kind of mental. Um, you're like, oh, my God, do, do, do they know? Do they know? You know, I start screaming and, like, banging the windows and stuff. Um, but then, like, Dad's already uh, taking care of it. But it was absolute carnage, man. I'm sure I was walking with someone, but I don't remember who that person was. I don't know if you ever have moments like that whenever something so, um, like, jarring happens that you kind of forget your, uh, I don't know, your, your specifics of, like, the people you're with or whatever. Um, it's weird how that works, man. I, I've, had a, I've had a few moments like that where, like, um, like, the only scary moment that I had when I was traveling was this mad German guy when I was in a place called Aachen. Um, I don't think he was German, though. He had a weird accent. Um, but he kept saying, hello there, Scottish man, because he asked me where I was from. And he was like, Scottish man, why are you here? You should not be here. Um, I am going to go and tell this policeman you are here. I was like, what the fuck, dude? Fuck off. You know, <laughs> I was like, what is going on? Um, and he kept following me saying, come to my house. I give you food. I was like, no. No, I was like, I'm not doing that, bro. You know, and I was just like, I was being very, you know, sh short tempered and like a one line, one sentence, one word um, answers, you know, just really quick and snappy. 
So I wasn't giving him any, you know, conversation because I could just like his vibe was all off and the way he just, you know, was trying to push me. Um, and he asked me where I was going. So I just lied to him and said I was actually going into Belgium. Yeah, but there's like a city called Liège, um, which is quite north in Belgium. Um, I just said that I was going there when I wasn't really. I was going more to the left um, to a place called Metz, I believe. Uh, or is that in France? Fuck, I always forget. So I was really close. Anyway, um, so yeah, I, I, I said that. And then... Um, he was like, oh, well, it's this way, it's this way. And I was like, oh, no, no, you're wrong. I'm sorry. I, I've, I've already logged this in my GPS, my guy. Um, so I'm going to be going this way because uh, I planned it out last night, you know, and with uh, enough, um, you know, perseverance. And I, I picked the steepest hill I could possibly walk up so that he would start to get tired because um, I was already very accustomed and, like, I had a lot of stamina um, for walking at that point. Um, so I was fine. Um, and then he, he just, like, fell off and said, ah, fuck you, and then ran away. Uh, I was like, fine. But, like, out of, you know, six months of walking, that was the only weird champ moment I had. So it was what it was. Um, but, yeah, like, in that moment, I, like, the only thing I was thinking of is how do I get rid of this guy? You know, that's it. So nothing else ever mattered. It's, it's a very, I don't know, like, that feeling of, like, threat. Like, you feel your hackles go up. Like, like in the back of your neck, you just feel that, like, all your hair just goes, whoosh. you know, you kind of, like, it's like, you know how you get those, like, mad lizard things on uh, Jurassic Park to go, <laughs> Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they, and like the back of their neck, they go, that shit, whenever they feel threatened. That's what I feel like. I, I, I feel like that sometimes. Uh, it just happens, you know. Um, it hasn't happened in a wee while, though. I'm trying to think. Um, I don't know, whenever you almost get in a fight in a bar. But that's been ages, dude. It's been ages. Honestly, uh, I hope that uh, crime's gone down during this pandemic because people aren't within vicinity of each other to punch the fuck. However, uh, I did see yesterday when I was going to get some... Um, what, what did I get? I got, I got some beers. Uh, I got some, some ham. Uh, did I get some cat food? No, we already got some cat food. I got something else. I forgot a pizza. I think. Uh, I just went for a wee shop, a little, a little me shop last night. Um, and uh, yeah, there was like some some rosers, um, some Polish man, uh, that were just down, uh, just up from my uncle's house, like um. They just, like, sat in a driveway, or not a driveway, but a way you'd, like, drive in to go to a bunch of houses. It was a bit weird. And uh, there was three of them as well. And obviously, when you're walking by, you want to look, you know, but I've got such a guilty conscience. Fuck me, man. Whenever I see the roads, I'm like, fuck, am I doing anything illegal? I'm just walking down the street. Like, am I doing anything illegal? What What have I done? What have I done? What have I, like, I'm going through my entire past, you know. Do, do they know who I am? Oh, jeez. You know, is there something I've done here? Um, but yeah, I don't know what the fuck was going on, but they were just going to stand in there. There wasn't even anyone there. Like, I was looking for, like, you know, the, the perpetrator. Maybe they were inside the car, I don't know. But, like, two of the police officers were outside, so it was what it was. Mm. But I... Dude, this tea's already getting cold. The fucking state of this, man. The fucking state of this. It's all right. I can pour some more tea. Dude, it splushes everywhere. How do you not pour from a teapot and make it not sploosh? I don't get that, dude. Oh, my... Like, uh, oh... I was going to mention, like, that fucking hell, man, full circle here, that the reason why I know it's splooshing is because of the fact that I've got the halogen heater on and everything's really lit in that way where you can see, like, little splashes. Um, so, yeah, when I'm doing that, it's like, just going fucking everywhere. Barely any of it's actually getting inside the cup. Mental. Mm. But, yeah, so I've been watching a lot of the Vikings stuff recently, um, and I'm adoring it. It's on Prime Video. I highly recommend it if you haven't watched it already. There's, like, six fucking seasons as well, and I've only started... I'm on to the second season now, though. There's only, like, ten episodes a season, so I think it's, like, 60 episodes. But still, it's a lot. You know, it's a lot of content to dig in. Um, and I love that whole culture. And, by the way, those dudes with the braided hair, they look cool as fuck, man. I reckon I'm going to start doing that. Like, my hair's, like, it's getting longer and longer all the time, obviously. And it's, like, down to, like, just below my chin now. Um, if I pull it, if I pull it down. Um, but I obviously, like, pardon me, I obviously put it back. So, like, the picture you're seeing, um, on the screen right here, that's from, uh, when I had a lot shorter hair. Um, that, that's from, like, uh, when I was in, still in Glasgow. That's, like, 2018, I think, uh, that picture. Um, it's a really good one. This is when I used to have a good camera. Um, I missed that, baby. What, what was it called again? Panasonic. It was like LX100 or something. Uh, something like that, I don't know. Um, but it was it was fantastic. And I, I brought that with me when I was walking and I had it in a little like pouch that I could just like whip out. Chink. Um, it was great. Uh, and then I just used it for taking a whole bunch of me photos. And um, I was selling clothes. So I took a bunch of pictures with that, with me like wearing the clothes and stuff. It's quite funny. I was I was like, ho like I had like a stick on it. Like, uh, I was like, I don't know. I had like a Gandalf stick, my guy Woodson. Um, and I would just like, like be leaning on it like, like with with the clothes on because like i i hate whenever people pose like um i don't know like they're pouting their lips and being all serious and stuff trying to look sexy um on whenever they're modeling like i just find that such a turn off i'm like how oh, did i do not want that clothing now 
<laughs> like, I just don't want that. Uh, it's weird. I don't know. I like whenever people are smiling or, or they're just like they got a cheeky face on or something or they're, I don't know, they're making some form of face. Um, I just like that. It's more enjoyable to witness. But I suppose modeling is a very, you know, uh, like perfectly aesthetic uh, kind of trade and stuff, so it's a different way to be. Um, I don't know. It depends on what you're modeling, I suppose. If you're modeling some mad grand dress, you're going to want to, you know, at least have some form of grandeur and elegance about you, you know. But when it comes down to being a fucking ASOS and these, like, buzz-cut cunts are looking at you with their pouted faces, like, fuck off, dick. Um, actually, I haven't shopped in ASOS in ages. I don't understand why people still do it. It's absolute pish. Like, the prices are woeful and the, uh, I don't know, it's just bland t-shirts for 12 quid. Like, what's going on on that, dude? Like, I, I like a little bit of, um, graphic stuff. Um, like, uh, what am I wearing right now? I'm wearing a Studio Ghibli, um, hoodie right now. That's actually the only thing I'm wearing. Um, I've got my willy out. I'm kidding. Uh, I've got, I've got my jeans on too. Oh, uh, speaking of my jeans, dude, I got a fucking mahusive hole uh, on my, on my right knee. And I'm actually thinking of sewing it up. I was thinking, because, like, there's a badass sewing machine, um, like, behind me. Right, and I'm thinking, of, like, I could rig that up, man. I could rig that up. Like, it's an ancient singer one, you know, one of those proper, you know, 50s ones um, that my granny would have had a long time ago. My granny was remarkable, the amount of things she could do. Um, you know, she was always fixing everything and, you know, making everything better. Um, so, yeah, I reckon I could, like, totally pull off something like that. I don't know if there's any thread, though. I need to find that. Um, and it's interesting, I was looking really hard for some paintbrushes uh, for painting in here, and I, out of everywhere in the entire fucking house, I could only find this brush that literally said in the packet, fine brush. So, like, fine brush. So it's, like, really small and, uh, you know, perfect. That's not amazing for painting a wall. Like, uh, this is about, I would say, what, I don't know, two meters by two and a half meters uh, tall, um, or, like, area. Uh, in here, so obviously, like, a wee fine brush isn't gonna do. I literally did think for a moment, can I just use a cloth? Can I use a cloth to paint? I'm sure it's possible. You get very dirty, though, I think. But, like, I think it's very much doable. Um, but, yeah, then I looked above me um, on the shelves that are here and inside one of the uh, the basins. Like, there's a whole bunch of basins there for some reason. Um, I found a big paintbrush. So, and it's brand new as well. It hasn't been used. So, uh, it will be... The, the thing that will be used tonight when we uh, go and paint the entirety of the booth. I'm so excited. I don't really know how I'm going to uh, set up the stream there because I need to, like, um, obviously not paint my my uh, equipment. Um, I'm kind of thinking, like, obviously the way that the, the webcam is is going to be facing outwards um, to the back door. So I'm thinking, like, do I just paint the walls that, you know, uh, stream can see? I mean, technically, it has only three walls, um, just because of the fact that, uh, there's a door behind me, um, but there is, like, little slithers of walls, so, like, certainly painting those would be important, but I do want to paint, uh, what's behind the monitors as well, um, uh, but that's not as crucial, I don't think, um, and also I don't have that much paint, so I don't know if I'll be able to cover it all, um, but the reason why is because it's, uh, it's annoying for my eyes, um, seeing the blue, the blue wall, um, whenever you're looking at monitors and stuff, um, I don't know, it's, it's just, like, there's something about that, like, uh, the way a room's painted really changes the feel of it. Um, I mean, I've, I've made this cozy. It is it is nice. Like, there's lights around, and, you know, I've got the wee heater and stuff, and the, the curtains up and stuff. So it's it's fine. It's cute. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think it will look a lot nicer. Um, the thing is I was thinking of as well is, like, even if I do... Um, <laughs> even if I do uh, paint tonight, I can't paint over wet paint. So... I think I might only be able to paint it grey tonight, and then that's it. Um, and then it'll be tomorrow that I'll be able to paint over stuff, but... I mean, I suppose that spreads out the content. The content, man. Speaking of content, I'm gonna go for a pee, and I'll be to the R to the B. Right, see you, um, with the power of editing on the other side. And with the power of editing, I'm back yet again. Well, I'm really quick at taking peas, aren't I? Honestly, it's absolutely sensational. Right, I'm gonna talk to you guys about this, um... I, for some reason, this song just, like, pinged into my head. Um, it's from an artist. Uh, the, this is Charlie and the Boys, and I don't like that, uh, because it's... Uh, well, maybe maybe it is, because it's Christy Moore. Like, Christ, Christy Moore... Oh, shit. Uh, wrong, wrong button. See, I always, always mess up, man! VHR! I cannot type whenever I do a podcast. What is this? Anyway, 
Right, here we are, here we are. So it is called Viva La Quinta Brigada. Now, this is a song, sung by a guy called Christy Moore, who's like, um, well, his Spotify. I'll, I'll read it exactly from this so I don't mess this up. Uh, the older brother of, oh, Jesus, I'm not going to read all that. Oh, Jesus. The older brother of Irish folk pop singer, songwriter, Looker Bloom. Um, he's Irish's music's best singer, songwriter. One of the most, one of the best fucking folk songs. Uh, f- singer songwriters, right? That, that's all you need to know. Like from Ireland, he's absolutely legendary. Well, there was a whole bunch of Irish lads who fought against Franco in the Spanish Civil War back in the oh Jesus, uh, what when the fuck was that, dude? Actually, when was that? Um, because it was Franco. It must have been like thirties or something, right? Uh, yeah, there you go. 36 of 39. There was a bunch of Irish lads that went over. So I'll read this for you. It says, Viva la Quinta Brigada. Listed as Viva la Quinta Brigada, which is actually really interesting because I'll tell you later. Is a Christy Moore song about the Irishman who fought in the Spanish Civil War against Franco. Fuck you, Franco. Uh, the title was inspired by a Spanish song about the war, Viva la Quinta Brigada. Moore wrote this song choosing to focus on the Irish socialist volunteers who in later years became known as the Col- Connolly Column, who were a small contingent within the 15th International Brigade. See, that's where it gets a little bit tricky. There was a wee slip. Um, Quinta, it says down here, um, I Moore's original song title, which translates as Long Live the 5th Brigade. So that's what Viva La Quinta Brigada means. Um, it was a slip because it's actually similar to Quinta, which, uh, wait, no, Quinta and Quinta. So Quinta is 15. So it was actually the 15th International Brigade, but he, he said it was the 5th. But, like, the entire sentiment of the song is still there. Um, anyway, I need to finish reading this. Um, aye, the tune which he used was substantially similar to the version of Viva La Quinta Brigada recorded by Pete Seeger and Almanac Singers in the early 1940s. Um, which is actually really interesting because it's right after the events, you know. Um, but yes, uh, basically, it's it's a really interesting um, just take on... There was only like 180 of the men that went over there. Um, but uh, they, they helped fight against the, the Nazi scum, uh, which is absolutely sensational. You would have never known about these guys had it not been for the song. Um, now, I would play it, but um, copyright, baby. Uh, I would get absolutely taken down by DMCA if I did anything like that. And also, I really don't know how that works on Spotify. I was thinking about that, man, because obviously Spotify is meant for music, but, like, do they have the similar thing of, like, YouTube and uh, Twitch where they scan everything in order to, like, see if you own the rights or not? And even if you do own the rights, how do you prove it for Spotify? You'd have to, like, have a proper account or something. I only have a podcasting ac- account, so it's different, you know. Um, well, yeah, it's absolutely fascinating to to witness. And, oh, Wikipedia's 20. Happy birthday, Wikipedia. Happy birthday to you. Um, but, yes, the, they fought for the, Spani- the Second Spanish Republic and all that. Um, but this song is absolutely banging. I'll give you my best rendition of it, right? Okay, hold, hold on a second right here. Uh, this has actually got a better better uh, lyrics, I think. It's like, Viva la Quinta Brigada No Paris and the pledge that made them fight Hey! Adelante is the cry around the hillside Hey! Let us all remember them tonight It's an absolute fucking banger, dude. Uh, I scream it. I'm like, Viva la Quinta! You know, like... <laughs> I absolutely adore Christy Moore. Um, he also has another band called uh, Planks T. I don't know if they're actually still doing things. Um, but if you look here, uh, I was less, I think this is yeah this this band here Planks T. Uh, they look a little bit older, so I'm not sure if they're making music anymore. Um, uh, there we go. It's in 1983 is when they started. So uh, I don't know when the most recent thing was. This is 2016. Oh, it's a live album. See, this is how Spotify does that to you, isn't it? It makes you think it's new music, and it's not. It's just like a re-recorded or repackaged um, live rendition. But that's not terrible. It could be worse. 2005 looks like their last proper album. Um, but yeah, I love all that like old Irish folk, um, Scottish folk music in that, man. It's so powerful. That, like The lyrics in there are... Um, beautiful. Like, there's so much story, and just like, it's just enriched with culture. I adore it. It's so good, man. Um, see, so yeah, I've like uh, I literally have a um a playlist called Fancy a Dram, which I'm very careful with what I put in here because I am far too used to um <laughs> just like adding shit to playlists and just having an absolute. Um, mad cacophony of just random shit in a podcast that sh- not in a playlist that should be something that's uh, quite specific. Um, 
I do that far too often. So um, fancy a dram is very careful. It make, It's like you're only ever going to listen to that kind of music if you're drinking and it's kind of later on at night, say like between nine and uh, three in the morning. You know, so that that's my nine to three in the morning. Uh, just chilling, chilling out and having a fucking get good, a good sing along um, in, in the house uh, song uh, playlist. So I like that stuff. I love to learn um, some proper folk tunes, man. I loved it on um, the sea shanties and stuff is like blowing up on TikTok because um, that's proper music, man. Like that that old school way that people used to get the, the whole crowd singing together. And, and I don't mean like screaming like, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, or whatever the fuck. You know, um, Adam's like right now got his, my little brother, he like is a SoundCloud rapper, right? He's fucking got his like head in his hands like fuck's sake, Stephen. It's a lot more than that, I have, you know, actually. I was like, I can imagine it is, right? But it's no fucking um, Dr. Dre 2001, man, when he's like, um, when it comes out, they, they got the like big Snoop Dogg and the fucking uh, hydraulic cars. I said, like, everyone, put your arms up. And like, everyone just go like, go, do, do. It's so fucking good, dude. Um, like, uh, I remember, um, I, I actually really owe a lot to Richard um, for having uh, listened to hip hop when I was growing up because it completely and utterly, uh, it, it gave me such an opportunity to actually listen to new, uh, to music that was new at that time. Um, but it was actually good pop music you know it was popular fantastic music and so that became what music was to me and then as i've grown older i've realized how shite i've had that perspective um to compare it to like how shite pop music has become obviously there's some decent stuff but the vast majority of it is absolute push in comparison um so it is what it is but i yeah i owe a lot to richie like even just like he used to listen to like tiesto um like Dave Pierce trance anthems, man. Like way back, I'm trying to think of other ones. Um, like Thin Lizzy. Uh, what else? Um, Linkin Park. Um, I mean, obviously like Eminem and Doctor Dre and uh, The Game. Uh, who else? Like, I mean, Fifty Cent and all that shit, dude. Um, all all that kind of stuff. I don't think what else. I mean, even Green Day. Like, uh, there was like a a moment where she went through a wee punk stage. It was great, man. Because I I'm a big punk. I fucking love it. Um, I literally have a. A playlist just called Punk Rock, bitch. <laughs> bitch. Um, and I'm keeping this really clean as well. Like, see, I've made these recently. Um, just because I, I need to make sure that, like, there's not a shit ton of uh, songs in there that I don't actually know. Um, or I don't know if I like them. Like, say, you could easily just go onto, like, a, a punk rock playlist and then just add the, all of it. But then you've got, like, 400 songs and maybe, you know, like, say... I know 60 of them, and the rest you don't know if you like, and I don't actually enjoy that. Like, I much prefer to just click in the playlist and know I'm going to like the song, or at least know it, you know? I mean, obviously, if I know it, then I'll probably like it, right? Because then I've listened to it a lot. Um, but yeah, for sure. Like, I think it's important to, like, clean up your Spotify playlists, because mine are a fucking state. Like, I actually deleted, I used to have a bunch of um uh, things down here. Uh, I know you can't see this if you're just listening, so it's basically, I used to have folders where I would uh, collect everything that was like in certain genres or whatever, and it just all went tits up, and I was like, dude, this is just a complete carnage. I'm just going to delete it all, so I deleted all my playlist, and then just uh, restarted again. Um, so I kept a few of them, you know. I've got, I've literally got a playlist called fucking pub. <laughs> it's good, dude. You know, uh, I don't know, like, uh, every once in a while I, I add a playlist and just like, it's like one song inspired the playlist and then I don't know what else to add to it. Um, it is what it is. Right, I have just started um, my very first uh, podcast email. It is called Stephen Lee Podcast at gmail.com. Um, do I keep smart features? Yeah, give me your smart features. Take my data, Google. Take my data. Oh, love it. Um, your account sense of change. You need to reload Gmail. Okay, there you go, mate. All right, okay, so Stephen Lee Podcast. If you guys would like to send anything to Stephen Lee Podcast, um, please stay. Uh, you know, like, I, I adore listening to Bill Burr have, like, people just write in about, like, things going on in their lives and, like, any advice or something. Um, if anyone would ever want to, like... Uh, you know, um, entertain me with that. That would be unreal. Um, because obviously, like, I can't expect that. We're very new here. But if you want to even just send in any comments about anything that's going on, um, or any stories you have, anything of interest, anything you want me to read, um, just just do it, dude. Um, you can obviously put stuff in the YouTube comments, but then that's public, and also you obviously get like a character limit. So I thought having Stephen Lee Podcast at Gmail dot com, um, the full on, uh. Uh, email, I think that would be quite smart to to have on there. So if you'd like to, uh, please do. Um, I think what I'll do is from from now on, I'll have like in the bottom. I have don't have it here, but I will I will change it. Um, for the next podcast, I'll have like uh the email at the bottom that would just say Stephen Lee Podcast at Gmail dot com. Um, that people can uh, then send stuff to. It'd be quite cool. I don't know, like. 
I think that is my favourite part of the Bill Burr podcast is whenever he gives people advice because obviously he's not like a trained psychiatrist or he doesn't necessarily... Um, he's not necessarily going to fix your problem, but um, A, it g- gives you like a comedic, um, it, it gives the people that send that in um, like a lighthearted comedic uh, kind of respite from the problems that they're going through, um, as well as uh, he does uh, at times give actually really sound advice because he's got perspective. He's he's done a lot in his life and that, you know, and I feel I've got perspective. I have not done a lot in my life. I still have a lot more to do um, and I don't think I'll ever be funny like that, obviously, um, but I think that, you know, I can certainly you know, make some content from it and hopefully, you know, make you feel heard if anything's going on. So if you want to send anything in, stephanleepodcast at gmail.com is the email. I have that in the description and stuff too, of course. Um, and yeah, I think I reckon that'll be really, really on point, to be fair. Um, but yeah, so next podcast, we're going to have Yamverse on as a guest. I actually want to, to be honest, dude, I could ask him tonight, but I think he's going to be, he's going to be streaming. Um, I'll see what he says. I could even record the podcast before he goes live. Um, on Friday. I don't know when his time slot is. Um, I could ask him that. Um, but his uh, Twitch is twitch.tv forward slash Janverse. So J-A-N-V-E-R-S-E, right? <laughs> I'm questioning myself. Hold on a second, right? Hold on, I'll type it in. I'll type it in and I'll put it on screen. This is how much I love you, Janverse. This is how much I love you, bro. Yeah, okay, we got it, we got it, I got it, I got it. Hold on, this is going to be massive. Oh, look at this. Yo, look at how I am such a professional, dude. If you're listening to this on on audio, you, you'll be wondering what the fuck's happening. I'm just, like, pasting a big massive twitch.tv forward slash yamverse on the screen right now. Um, but it looks like that. He's uh, one of the homies. Um, I've known him for a good while now. Um, I, I haven't met him nearly enough times. Uh, COVID got in the way of a lot of that. But um, yeah, we both live in Scotland. He's uh, an East Coast, least Coast Edinburgh person, though. Like, what the fuck, dude? Okay, maybe not Edinburgh. But like, maybe a little bit further out. But still, he's an absolute legend. I love him. Uh, West Coast, best coast, by the way. For, for real, dude. West Coast. <laughs> Speaking of 2001, Dr. Dre. Uh, no, but for real. Um, he's an absolute homie. Um, and I am so proud of how far he's going. Um, his little brother's doing really well as well. They're both very musical people. Um, yeah, versus as a DJ and Joe versus just like a musical artist. Um, he's creating so many different genres. Pardon me. Um, and I've seen him, um, this is I'm talking about Joe Verse here. I've seen him Im- improve significantly from his first track to his uh, most recent. Um, that man's going to go so far, dude. Um, and his big brother's going to support him uh, so well as well by playing his tracks. It's such a perfect like circle there. Um, it'd be really cool to get them both on um, at the same time, but I think it will be separately at first, um, and then we can probably get them both on. Um, and I think that'd be great crack, uh, you know. Um, having a podcast like uh, the, it's so crucial to not overthink it. Like just jump in and speak to people, understand who you're talking to. So don't just make it so um, naked or so uh, like like you just not like the first time you're meeting them, like, you don't know anything about them. Like, because you have to be able to ask important questions. So, when I know these lads, so I can ask the right questions. But as it gets on to people that I don't necessarily know that well, I need to know why I'm having them on. So, it, uh, like, you know, what they do, I'll just look at their, like, Twitter or their Instagram or, like, any of their socials, like, if it's on Twitch or Discord or whatever, and, like, understand what they're doing Um, that is just, like, interesting. Um, And they, they, will, will, they will end up talking about, what's your passion? Like, what what, what gets you up in the morning what fires you up you know what what is something that you feel you should be doing right now you know like what is that and that's what i want to know about people i want to know about that passion i want to know about that life because i think it's so important and um it's certainly right fucking now dude with like the covid pandemic shutdown and everyone's feeling demotivated or the majority of people are there's a lot of uh absolute hardcore grinders out there um and i'm i'm really uh you know um I my debt to a lot of those people because they've kept me going. Um, but yeah, like, I want to know what is firing you up still. You know, what's that wee rocket under your arse that just makes you fucking want to go and jump out there into life and have that ambition and uh, be restless and get stuff done, you know? Um, like, I do have that in me, but I have noticed, like, over the pandemic, I mean, 2020 is just completely and utterly drop kick for me um, and then salt me in the face, man, and I'm just healing as I'm going. Um, but yeah. I feel like uh, uh like it, it's always amazing to have friends around me that are impassioned about things um and then I can just like kind of feed off of them and like just be really inspired by them too um so yeah like anyone that's like that it's important to know who they are and what they do so you can really uh explore their thoughts and passions without them feeling like they're kind of you know uh being 
like o- overtaking stuff you know it's like they're being asked and it's, it's wanted like that information um so yeah like anyone that's out there that wants to be in the podcast just let me know like i know i know we're very no we're very new um but uh it'd be cool it'd be cool to just get um like the a multitude of guests as possible and obviously just if you're on like first like obviously these are this is like uh single digit numbers in the podcast you can always get on again like in 10 podcasts you know so we can like re redo it and like uh I'll be better at talking to different people and stuff. Um, so it'll be good fun. Like I, I think that's one of the most important things. Like I was talking to True about that, about how there there's people that I used to have on other podcasts when I was doing it with other people, which is always a lot more difficult because of schedules and stuff and like how much you can actually say without um having another like three people or whatever like try and talk as well. Like I'm I'm not trying to say like I've got a better opinion, but um you know, you don't get as much airtime um as you would if it's your own podcast, like this one obviously. LOL Stephanie Podcast, who? Stephanie who? Um but yeah, I can speak to these people again and then just get like a whole new person from them, which I think is beautiful. That's one of the most amazing things about, um, you know, having time away from people. Um, I think that's so crucial, by the way, like having time away from people, like especially if it's like someone you're intimate with, like a, like a girlfriend or a boyfriend um, or like uh, someone you're close with, like your family or whatever. Like if you spend time with or your best friend, even if you're always with someone and someone keeps pressuring you to be with them all the time, you're never going to learn anything new, man. You're going to be stuck in a rut of just knowing each other and... And you won't be able to develop outside of them. You've kind of got to develop outside of people and develop on your own and soulfully. Um, <laughs> soulfully in two ways. Soulfully for your fucking soul to actually have some substance about it. And soulfully um, so that you can actually learn who you are. Like, I was realizing, dude, like, how many of you guys actually, like, um, sit still? Like, actually just sit and listen um, to yourself and what's going around. I'm not necessarily talking about meditation. That's obviously part of that. But, like, uh, just being still. I was realizing I am always, always, like, having some form of content playing. So whether it's on, whether I'm making it, I'm talking to people, you know, like, uh, on, like, Stephen Lee Podcast or twitch.tv forward slash Mr. Stephen Lee. Um, plug, by the way. Uh, <laughs> or, you know, watching other people or talking in discords or playing games or watching uh, Top Gear clips when I go for a pee. You know, like, th- things like that you know, or um, making my dinner and, like, I've got something on, you know, or watching Vikings. Like, I'm always doing something. I was like, fuck, I've never slowed down. I don't just slow and stop. Even when I fall asleep, you know, I put on... I mean, usually I like to put on this thing called moving art, which is beautiful. It's actually one of my favorite times of my day um, is to just, like, relax and watch moving art. So it's basically like a David Attenborough documentary, but with no commentary. So it's a, a beautiful... Like um, like I was watching like Hokkaido, so uh, the Japanese island where the, the those monkeys um or baboons I think um like they go inside the 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 springs like they uh the volcanic springs that are super warm um and they're just chilling in there with like snow all around them it's just like someone has or like a team has gone there and like filmed them all but there's no commentary it's just witnessing what they're doing and like around in the area you know there's like drone shots and everything it's so beautiful and then you get that but it's all over the world so it's like going from Thailand. Uh, Cambodia to fucking, I don't know, like, Canada to... I haven't seen Scotland yet. I really want to see Scotland. That'd be cool. Like, seeing, like, deer and eagles and stuff. Um, But, yeah, like, all over the world. Like, a a lot of America, too. Like, uh, Yosemite and stuff. Um, It's so amazing. I love that. And it's so relaxing because there's no commentary. You can just kind of fall asleep to it. It's beautiful. Um, However, I do also... um, fucking fling on some Top Gear, like old Top Gear, or some Grand Tour, you know. Grand Tour is actually really good. I didn't give it enough of uh, hype. I thought, oh, it's all scripted, dude. But like, I was watching the buggy one last night. It was fucking hilarious. <laughs> it's really good. Uh, when they're in Namibia and they have to go from the, the south to the north of the, Namibia. Um, it's, it's honestly brilliant. Uh, they, they did so well with that series. Um, they're still going. They're still going, you know, they're making like specials here and there. Honestly, like, the Top Gear boys, like Richard Hammond and me, have affected so many childhoods, you know? Like, just made banter such an installment of people's lives, and I adore that. Like, that, that is, that, that, that's one of the most powerful forces, is laughter and humour and being able to see the light in things, you know? Um, I love witty banter. You know, Dave. Dave, the home of witty banter. Uh, <laughs> all that shit. It's great crack. Um, but yeah, so I will certainly get Yamverse on soon. Joeverse too. Um, I, I've got quite a few people that I don't want to name them necessarily in case they can't, but Phoenix is once on as well, and I want him. 
uh bb people shy uh but no i i want him on too so uh i'll need to organize proper dates for that i'm actually going to be productive about that and stop procrastinating uh get it done jump on top of it and yeah it'll be really quite cool to have a bunch of new new people on that we can uh get to explore um i think that is incredibly important i will of course do these like little i don't want to call them filler episodes because i don't want to make this necessarily always guests um it's the stephen lee podcast you know it's not like i'm going to build this on always having another person because frankly i won't be able to do that um i have to uh have episodes where it's just me uh well me and you you know if like if you're just hanging out with me so thank you for that um you know thank you uh but for real like i think it's good to also just have podcasts with just me on and in time i will have people in person too um as you know lockdown restrictions are lifted and whatever uh yeah i don't know how that's gonna work necessarily i will be with my mom and dad i don't know if i can maybe get one with my mom that would be so fucking cool i would love that uh, my mom has lived such a glorious life, man. She's barely even halfway through, you know. So it's it's unreal. Like, uh, like she's been teaching for 30 years as a primary school teacher. She's taught all of my brothers. My big brother is 29. And from, so for 26 years or 25 years, um, she's been teaching uh, her, all her boys um, from primary one to seven, which is r- absolutely remarkable, you know. And that's only in one school. Like, she was in plenty of other schools before that too such a beautiful woman so capable um i think that's really where i get my creative streak from um I, i'm so proud of her uh, and i think it'd be great to have her on um my dad as well but i don't think he would i don't know um my dad's a bit more shy and doesn't really understand streaming that much he has got a lot better since when i started i say streaming because that's the main thing but like uh just content creation in that kind of way um but you never know uh and it would be fucking hilarious to actually have a few beers with him and see what see what happens you know i could even i don't know like get the whole family that would be unreal we could just have a microphone in the middle or a few microphones actually that, i don't know how that would work but have like a few microphones and everyone just kind of like hangs out that will probably likely be like far in the future uh but i think that'd be so cool that'd be so cool so yeah like you know, there's a lot of my a lot of things and thoughts and ideas and uh constructions of how to make this all better um going on in my head right now and yeah i'm just i'm really grateful you guys are here for the journey thank you for uh supporting me so much and uh sharing the podcast on instagram on your stories and i will do everything i can to thank every single one of you and repost that stuff too it's it's so kind that it's super humbling like um i'm honored that you guys are uh wanting this to do well um and if you want on just let me know you know tell me tell me what you're all, all about give me a little fucking blurb of yourself um and then we can just see what's going on um but yeah, thank you so much for listening again to the Stephen Lee Podcast. This has been the fifth episode. Uh, remarkable, I've got five of them done already. Hasn't even been two weeks. Amazing. Uh, has it been two weeks? No, it hasn't. It hasn't. Almost two weeks. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, yeah, we'll have the next one will be with Yamverse probably. Um, we'll see whenever he actually uh, has time free. Um, it will either be it will likely be after after his uh, his um, DJ session. Um, I'm I'm super hyped for him to do that, man. I can't wait for it. Um, absolutely i worked so hard man one of the hardest working content creators i know um just one of the hardest working lads and he's so sound mate so sound honestly give him, give him a big kiss of homie you know love you yamverse um please do follow him on twitch.tv forward slash yamverse he's an absolute lad i'm on everywhere on socials at mr stephen lee so twitter instagram uh twitch uh discord as well join the discord if you want um it's the link down below discord is such a brilliant like chat room kind of uh server idea thing it's kind of like a I don't know. It's really hard to like confirm what it is. It's like you know, whenever you, I, I don't, I don't know. It's a bit like Skype, but not shite. Uh, <laughs> it, you know what I'm saying? It's a bit like that. So uh, please do join that. It'd be so so wonderful to see new people come in from the podcast. That'd be so cool. Um, please do uh, like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> Mega lol. Uh, yeah, no, I really do appreciate the um, people liking the the videos it doesn't mean a lot um whenever people are doing that on youtube so thank you um and as i say we've got the the new um email stephen lee podcast at gmail.com um anyone can send in anything i'm not going to guarantee i read out everything because i can imagine um some of it will be absolute rotten uh but no uh if you want me to read out anything any stories any advice anything that's going on that you just want me to talk about um that'd be great crack uh great crack you know even if it's like like a humorous story or like it's like a, i don't know like a, a story you've learned something from I want to read stuff. I want, like, an interactive environment within the podcast. I think that'd be super cool. Um, so, yeah, please do. If you're feeling up to it or have a story to share, share it. You know, make it super eloquent as well if you need to. Or make it really fucking 
like uh, to the point it's like full stops and like little sentences you know and then I can just rip the piss out of your grammar uh, I don't know <laughs> like whatever but yeah thank you so much for listening again to the Stephanie Lee podcast uh, yeah that's me for today I will see you on the next one with Yamverse alright slanjava enjoy yourself don't be a cunt and I'll catch you after bye bye <laughs>